Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Derek here. Today we are reacting to another episode of Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Uh, this is Season 7, Episode 8. It's called After Before. Uh, before we jump into it, please consider leaving a like on the video and please consider subscribing. Liking the video helps so much, uh, so thank you. Um, last time on Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., it was the totally excellent adventures of Mac and the D. Uh, so... Obviously, two episodes ago, Mac's parents died, um, even though he lived his whole life with his parents in his own timeline. Um, in this timeline, the Chronicoms killed his parents and took, took over, and he had to kill them. So even though it wasn't technically his parents, it was still a traumatic experience, um, and that took a toll on him. So he spent most of... Well, not most... He spent half of this last episode just, like, drunk at home, building model cars and stuff, and being mean to Deke, and it was just like, come on, man. Um, and then Deke invited, invited him to a bar, and he showed him his band, which was really nice. Uh, so Deke, Deke did what he always does, is he, he takes established things, and he steals them and pretends they're his uh so like what he what he would do with shield tech now he did with uh the song take on me by aha um and it was excellent they dedicated like a full three and a half minutes of the episode to that song um but the chronicoms invaded the lighthouse and deke and mac and the ragtag team had to fend them off and it was exciting and it was funny and it was full of 80s references and, and it was it was wonderful i loved it um now mac is no longer depressed theoretically uh because they were chilling in 82 83 for quite a while i think total from when the zephyr jumped to when it met them again was 20 months they said so almost two years it's a long time um i don't know what's gonna happen next are they in what like what year are they in uh what are the chronicoms planning to do because they they got the time stream to nathaniel malik who has daisy's abilities and he's presumably not gonna do great stuff uh because he's a bad guy so i don't know we'll see what happens um, I'm excited. I'm I'm excited to watch different relationships develop. I, like there's a interesting vibe going down with Daisy and Susa. I wouldn't mind it if they ended up together. You know, I I've, I've been on the the Daisy and Deke ship for a while, but that seems like it's not going anywhere. Uh and I feel bad for Deke, but if I'm honest, I like Sousa better, so, uh, yeah, let, yeah, let's jump into the newest episode. We'll be back in a few minutes. No, you won't. What's this supposed to do that? Uh, no, it's not. It's not supposed to do that. Oh, dear. What? How much time did we lose? According to satellite telemetry, we've jumped approximately 481 days. <sighs> yep. Deacon Mac. A while. I've been alone the whole time. Mac, do you read? I think they jump again Nothing. a little farther. There's only so much right? I can cover. You worried about losing them too? Not really. I have faith. Yeah, they jump again. The mathematics. And they're at the door. <laughs> Ayo. Welcome back, everyone. What's cracking? So what's wrong? Ooh, I like this intro. Kind of reminded me a little bit of uh, Tron. I don't know why. So this is at this rate, the Zephyr will collapse into a space-time singularity in two days. Well, it's not good. Speaking. 20 minutes. You're coming in now? 
The jumps and the time we spend in any given time period are getting exponentially shorter. They keep getting smaller. And Metaphorically, yes. So how can you fix it? Like, what do you do? Jaiyun is that afterlife. If anyone else had a cure and he empowers her, can we get there in time? Can you reboot him? Yeah, but... Do it. Do it. Do it. They only have half a body right now. Still, yeah. <laughs> Till I was all here. Things are pretty dire right now. This plant's pretty thin, May. I'd rather have a thin plan than live through the 80s again. Enoch, you have the course heading for our afterlife. Yeah, the 90s shoes move on. <laughs> Continue longer. Yeah, I'm gonna die. I can feel you worrying from here. You can. I thought you needed to touch some more to do that. When did this start? While we're in the lighthouse. I was starting to feel more like myself. And then, uh, Interesting. I picked up on you and Max uh, <clears throat> reunion from outside the room. <laughs> Babe, that's horrible. Well, I wasn't all bad. You're invasive. You're feeling what I'm feeling. So That's gross. Even more. The legend of Korra? Please, don't bring me back there. Take her over. Hey. What about them? Who the hell are you? We're here to see Zha Yang. I need to secure them. You shouldn't have come here. Good old Gordo. He's dead. <laughs> Yo, Jai Ying, what's up, girl? How did you know my name? I was told to find you. My name is Elena. Hey, what's up? Nah. This isn't a vine. Oh, yeah, she's in human. She already knew what it was. We'll do what we can for you. They're dangerous to us. Something took away. I feel like this guy always plays a not really great guy. He always plays a a bad dude. He was a bad dude in the expanse. Uh he's he's been a bad dude in other shows. Then we can Oh, she's feeling his emotions. Do you keep a lot of prisoners here? Like that woman you saw running away from She's not a your concern. Why? What did you do to her? Dang, that's cool. What was he? He's got a cool, cool power. He's like a Vilgefortz in The Witcher. Just can... Manifest a blade at any point. That's dope. Why would they put them right next to someone who is gonna scream? <laughs> Sorry, we disturbed you. Is she okay? Cora will be fine. She just needs her rest. As do you. She's the Avatar, so she's gotta rest up. Avatar. You see dangerous. Do I look like a Neanderthal to you? I spent time with a tribe of Neanderthals. <laughs> Agent Sousa does not resemble one. He lacks the characteristic brow regions. Can we just... <laughs> you, please? you goober. <laughs> we did a thorough search for any contaminants, flying particles, pathogens. She wasn't poisoned. It's all in her head. 
I'm sorry, Mary, but your problem isn't physical. It's in your mind. I, I've been saying this for That's your theory? 15 I episodes. This is real. This is literally my worst nightmare. Finally, we agree on something. We live in a long force. Now, all I'm feeling from you is embarrassment. Your physical contact will help. I have an idea. Fight? I think you're gonna fight. Yeah, I knew. <laughs> Avoid my hits using your power. I'm so not sure. Yeah, that was a traumatic thing. To have that thing go inside you. Yeah, you cut that girl's throat. Does she think that her using her powers is leading to bad things? Like when she killed Ruby, when she saved Flint. She thinks when she does something heroic, it leads to pain for other people. You know, I was thirsty for a year and a half. With no way to, no body. Oh, stomach, that sounds body. horrible. Yes, we could be crazy. Me too. Susie pulled me out of the wreckage. Got us home. I'm glad he's here. That makes me happy too. There's some, some, I don't know, I can't tell if there's hints of something. I like to be prepared. You ever jumped out of an airplane before? Twice. I already had a parachute the second time. Yeah. In the event we do get stuck here, I thought you should have this. I put it together after you came on board. What is that? Prosthetics have come a long way since the 1950s. Is that a new leg? Isn't that the the necklace that she gave Mac? And that Lincoln died with? That was risky. Yeah. Her doing that got uh got her uncle killed. Yeah, anytime she's uh, she's not stayed still, it's resulted in bad things happening for her at least. What's wrong? Yo, dang son. What did you do to her? We didn't do anything. Cora did this herself. She's nearly destroyed afterlife a dozen times. That's why we were so eager to help him. If there were, we. Yo, is Daisy there? No, Nathaniel. Frick, gosh dang it. Look at that gross trench coat. Cora, you don't have to die today. I really want you to come home and never feel trapped again. All you have to do is say yes. I don't know if you'll ever get this. It won't be easy. But I know we'll find some way to be together again. Time is peace. It's never stopped us before. <laughs> True. True facts. They are meant to be together.
I've always loved you, no matter what. You're gonna let him put a knife through my heart. Never. Sweetheart. Sweetheart, remember when I would read your stories till you fell asleep, or would I always say at the beginning, when a child ended? Is she related to her? Have witches and Sir, she's beyond. Lee, no, stop! Come on, yo-yo. Oh, maybe not. Oh, dang. She just smoked him. That's very interesting that that is her daughter. Because now that means Daisy has a sister who could play a role in the final few episodes. Ooh. One opportunity. Sees everything you ever wanted. In one moment. Did you capture it? Or just let it slip? Woo! God dang, man. Yo, yo. Come in. Did it all stem from her initial grabbing it and running back? She doesn't have to bounce back anymore? Interesting that that is what, uh, what she needed. Hey! Winner, winner, chicken dinner. So she doesn't have, she's not yo-yo anymore. She's just, she's like walk the dog yo-yo. Where it just, it just goes. <laughs> she's just the flash now. Brand new leg. That's so cute. He's just like sitting there waiting. So where did it jump to? Let's call it a redistribution of wealth. He's going to take their gifts? In mean, all these rules, who's given a gift? Who's given nothing? Who lives? Who dies? It's all written in the stars. I feel like we should shake things up. Give the world a little something. What's that? Okay, so that was a that was another good episode. Um, the we finally fixed Yo Yo. It's been all season of Yo Yo just not being able to use her power well, and I called it from the very beginning. I was like, "This is not. It it has nothing to do with the Shrike. It's just her. It's just in her head." Um, and it it all stems back to her holding herself back so from the first moment that she was like heroic so to speak not even heroic she was just stealing something um but she thought it was a a good reason um she stole she ran out stole the thing came back kind of like a yo-yo um and then because of that her uncle was killed and then that was like the first event and then Jumping way forward in time, we had, like, when she killed Ruby. Um, it, it showed a few other examples of, like, times that she's used her power, and it hasn't ended well. Like, she's obviously used it for plenty of good things, but, like, she seems to be stuck on the times where it didn't work out. And she doesn't want another instance where it doesn't work out and things go wrong and someone dies and like she she can't handle that happening to her again so she's been mentally just holding herself back from using her gift 
Um, and it's a little convenient that they now are just like, yeah, she never has to, had to go backwards. It's just now she can just be the Flash. So, <laughs> uh, I mean, definitely an upgrade for her. But, I mean, I feel like she's, other than, you know, being called, I, like, the fact that she had to go back to where she started, it's only come into play, like, a, a few times when she's used her gift. Most of the time, she's able to just be crazy fast and do whatever. And it's spo supposed to be in a heartbeat or whatever, but, like, she can definitely... Could she, like she's been able to go way more than that before, uh, so like the rules of her speed power have have rarely even come into play to begin with, but it's still convenient that they're like, oh yeah, now you have no rules, you're essentially just a flash, you can do whatever you need. Uh, it's also I don't know, I don't know if I like fully bought. I mean, well I bought it, but it wasn't like super convincing or crazy effective that. Like May being like, oh, yo, you, you don't have to bounce back or whatever. Her being like, I don't have to bounce back. Like, how does that clear, how does that clear her head of like allowing herself to do it? Like, and not holding herself back. Like, I, I don't, I don't necessarily know exactly why that was the thing that kind of like cleared the dam, so to speak. Um, but, you know, it is what it is. Uh, she got it done. But so the main conflict of this episode is that the time drive that they have is like fritzing out or something and it just keeps cycling crazy fast and and like a stone skipping on the water the skips keep getting more frequent but shorter so eventually if they just let it go it'll just be going every second or two essentially it'll collapse itself into like a black hole pretty much uh and they'll just be jumping to smaller and smaller uh, instances of time and they'll kind of be like stuck in time like it'll seem as though they wouldn't be moving but really they're just going like deeper and deeper into that singularity um so they take her to uh afterlife to kind of fix this and they meet Jai Ying and and Lee he's got a cool power he can just manifest like these cool collector knives, uh, like CSGO knives from his hands. Um, so that's pretty neat. Coulson's getting a new body. Coulson's really dealing with, like, I don't think he wants to be alive anymore. Like, he's been confronted with the reality that he's, like, he keeps being confronted with the reality that he's not human and that he is kind of just a robot. And then he blew himself up and then spent like almost two years just as like a as a TV as like a VCR, uh, and he couldn't. He was thirsty the whole time, but he couldn't drink water. Like the the programming that he had was still built into him. Like the programming to be as human as possible was still built into him. So he still had hunger and thirst and stuff, but he couldn't do anything about it. Um. But he's happy for Daisy to, you know, be alive and be interested in Sousa. Mm. There's a little bit of, like, fatherly approval there. Um, I don't know if they're, like, fully gonna go that route. Are they, like, are they gonna be like, hey, there's a romance between these two? Because uh, Sousa is definitely, uh, Sousa's definitely into her. He, like, when she was hurt, he was, like, protecting her, petting her hair. Now when she's going into the pod, he's sitting there just, like, on a chair waiting. It's like the loving boyfriend where his his girlfriend's in the hospital and, and he's just, like, he's not leaving her side. Seuss is the best. Um, he gets He gets a new leg, like, a new prosthetic. So I thought, I was under the impression that he had, like, both his legs. Like, both his legs were still there. But one of them was injured because he's had like a brace on it, right? Um, and so that causes him to limp. I guess I was, am, was just wrong. And so he had a prosthetic on. But it was old prosthetic, so it sucked. And now he's got a new one, so he won't walk with a limp, presumably, anymore. Because um, the prosthetics that they make are like dank AF. 
Um, so that's nice. He doesn't have to do the, the actor doesn't have to limp around all day on set. Um, yeah, what else happened? Oh, so like the, the conflict in Afterlife. So Jai Ying had another daughter, presumably not with Daisy's dad. Um, and this is a daughter I don't think we ever knew about before. Or may maybe they did mention her in previous seasons, like they had to kill her or whatever. But I think, I'm pretty sure this is the first time we're learning about her, but she has a gift where she like explodes, like solar energy kinda. There was a hero kinda like that called Nitro in the comics. He's the one that caused um, civil war. Uh, so he he blew up like a bus full of kids or something and then he would recraft himself um and that that was what was uh like he blew up himself a bus full of kids and like half the new mutants or whatever uh and that's what started like the superhero registration act and, and civil war and all that i wonder if if she is like a play on that or just like a if they just decided, hey, like, you explode uh, solar energy. Like, she doesn't hurt herself. Um, but she can't control it, so she has almost destroyed Afterlife multiple times, so they're kind of keeping her locked down until they can find a way to either uh, suppress her powers, take them away, or for her to control them. Uh, otherwise they'll have to kill her and Lee obviously wants to kill her. Um, but you know, that's obviously not the greatest option. Uh, May and, and Yo-Yo fight to, to connect, which is very typical of both of them. They're just fighters. Um, and we, yeah, we learn more about the, the internal trauma, the mental trauma that Yo-Yo has gone through and still held herself under. Um, and it, it, it was, it was interesting and good to, to learn about, um, you know, all, all the decisions they've made when you watch the show that like over the course of seasons, they've done a lot of stuff and a lot of it has resulted in people dying and, and seemingly a lot of them kind of just move past it. Uh, so it's interesting to see that at least one person, Yo-Yo, is having some some clear guilt about the things that specifically she's done. So, you know, she has guilt about killing Ruby. Um, you know, she used her power and killed her, and and she feels awful about that. You know, in the in the future in the lighthouse, she used her power to um, uh, save Flint from dying uh and being or being not dying but being captured by the the Kree when he went through Terragenesis and she used it a bunch as well and then because of that uh uh frick what's her name I don't know re remember what her name was but Flint's friend um was killed but then brought back I don't think she died again I think they jumped back before that but like like her actions and her using her gift have sometimes resulted in bad things happening to people so she's holding herself back and yeah a lot of people are are going through some stuff even even Gemma she was like I don't know if we're gonna make it through this so she's sending a message to Fitz being like I love you I will find a way to get back to you like time the universe nothing can stop us from being together which is why they are the greatest TV couple in history. And it makes me so sad that we've gone through eight episodes and not seen Fitz. How long was he filming this stinking movie that he was in? Come on. Or this show that whatever he was in. We need Fitz. Gosh dang it. Uh, Nathaniel. What a goober. Not a goober. He's a bad guy. He takes Cora, the legend of under his wing and then is essentially like hey who cares if you can't control your power you just need to let it out and kill everyone which like in turn it somehow just automatically makes her able to control her power 
uh, he's like, you don't have to be trapped. You can be trapped by me instead. And she's like, ah, oh, that sounds pretty nice. Uh, so then they attack Afterlife and they they take everyone hostage and yada, yada, yada. They, Yo-Yo pulls the thing out so they, they stop jumping rapid style. But then when Enoch and Deke are fixing it, or at least looking at it, they jump again. And we don't know where they jump to. Uh, if they put the... Did they put the coil thing back in? Or did it just jump without a coil? Um, who knows? Uh, I don't think it'll be another short jump because that seemed to be an issue specific to, um, you know, it cycling super quick and, and the jumps getting shorter. So they were only jumping like 20 minutes at a time at the end. So who knows? Uh, Coulson had to shut down. He's cl he's clearly not a fan of like that he's a robot. <laughs> I don't think he likes it. Um, and then, yeah, it ends with, uh, with Nathaniel and, and the Legend of Korra having all the people in Afterlife hostage and talking about a redistribution of wealth. So he's planning on probably taking all their gifts because he has the knowledge on how to do it. And he's gonna give them to other people. Uh, I assume his own people. I don't think he would just give them to random citizens, uh, which happens later. What was that? Season two, season one, or season three, maybe with the fish pills where everyone was getting teragenesis. Um, I don't know that it's it's crazy that was, this was a good episode I think this episode was more of like a not a filler episode but like a like that things had to get done to set up the the last this was like the transition episode between like what's gonna happen on, on the last arc um yeah like setting up the final confrontations maybe uh, the next episode is called As I Have Always Been. So I think it's probably going to uh, focus maybe on... on um, Enoch. <laughs> I think it's probably going to focus on Enoch. Um, maybe maybe take us through like what he's been going through. Or like his relationship with the Chronicoms. Who knows? Uh, what did you think of this episode? Uh, what do you think is going to happen next? Actually, the next episode's already aired, so don't tell me. Um, but yeah, let me know what you think of this episode, of previous episodes. Like, did you enjoy this episode? Are you as upset as me that Fitz has not come here yet? Do you think it's too convenient that Yo-Yo got her powers, like, upgraded? Or is it, like, are you okay with it? Like, what do you think? Um, yeah, I think that's all my thoughts. So I will catch you guys next time. Oh, please subscribe and please like the video. That means a lot. I'm all, almost to a thousand. I need like 11 more. And it, it's it's a slow trickle right now, but it, it's, it's working its way. Um, yeah, that's all I got. I'll, I'll, uh, I'll catch you guys next time. Peace.